Welcome to the NASA TLX training session. Today you will be introduced to and learn more about one of the most commonly used tools in the workplace for workload evaluation. This training program will guide you through the crucial components of the NASA TLX and how to use it. At any point during the video, you can pause, rewind, and watch a section again. Let's get started. Wax on, wax off. Wages 2-1, runway 2-1 right at echo. Wind, 240 at three, cleared for takeoff. I am Staff Sergeant Shakita Tischler from Lake Toxway, North Carolina. I am an Air Traffic Control Fundamentals Instructor. I'm Airman First Class Richardson from St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm a trainee in Air Traffic Control School. You're gonna re be responsible for not only millions and millions of dollars of equipment, but of thousands and thousands of lives. On your first day of class, they teach you that your class is like your crew, which would be at your first base, you would be on a crew. You work as a team. It's one unit and everyone needs to help each other get through it. You come in this room and you're evaluated by an instructor. They critique you the entire way, so you have to be able to listen to you know, what they're saying to you and fixing whatever you just did wrong, as well as hear the pilots and remember what they said. You just really need to be able to multitask. And it's a lot of information at once. Teaching them the different phraseology is like learning a new language. It's the language that we use to communicate with the pilots, with other air traffic controllers. It's a lot like English, but it's, it's more compact, uh, a little bit more concise. You go home every night, you study for two hours, you practice your phraseology, you say it out loud, because just saying it over in your head isn't going to make you be able to spit it out right when it comes down to it, when there's pressure, when your teacher's behind you. You just keep saying it over and over and over again until you are fluent. A way is two, three, canyon approach. So to maintain 5,000, turn left heading 030, vector the ILS final approach course. Runway like 21 right, went 240, 10, altimeter 29 or 83. But by the end of the course, you're spinning phraseology out in seven seconds, like they told you to. You didn't think you'd ever be able to do it, but you know, you do. The best part is, is seeing that light bulb come on. And even better when you get the emails back saying, I got my first rating. It's a good feeling. Today I found out that I'm the top grad for my class and I'll be going to Germany. I'm elated, I guess. This is one of the reasons that I joined the Air Force was to travel. It's going to be a challenge, but, you know, look what I've accomplished so far. I'm ready for it. Does this look easy to you? As you heard, it involves multitasking, understanding technical language, working in a time-constrained environment, and other skills that require focus, effort, and hours of training. How do we know when a task is too much for a worker to complete, too overwhelming, too stressful or just too complicated? Is there a way of quantifying the subjective feelings of difficult versus easy for a task? The National Aeronautics and Space Administration Task Load Index is one way to accomplish this. This subjective, multidimensional assessment tool was published in 1988 by the Human Performance Group at NASA's Ames Research Center over three years and after dozens of laboratory simulations. It is a post-task questionnaire used to measure workload assessments associated with a given task. It is used by designers, manufacturers, and managers to assess subjective workload in any task in order to improve task safety and worker performance by identifying workload costs as well as specific factors that influence the received workload of the task. Since its development, it has been applied to many situations most commonly in workplace environments that involve human and machine interfaces, such as aviation, office workstations, or labs. In the world of human factors research, it is recognized as the gold standard in subjective mental workload assessment, and its influence is reflected in its multiple translations and worldwide use. Let's move on to the context in which the NASA TLX is used. We will start with understanding the concept of mental workload. Mental workload describes the level of attentional resources required to complete a task. It can be influenced by task demands, external support, or past experience. Modern technology imposes greater cognitive demands upon operators than physical demands. Therefore, understanding how mental workload affects performance is essential. The NASA TLX can be used to design jobs that have a lower mental workload and in turn lead to lower stress levels and reduced accident rates in the workplace. Mental workload is a multidimensional concept. The main categories of workload measurement are performance-based, physiological, and subjective. 
The NASA TLX has been found to be the most valid measurement of subjective workload, to have the highest user acceptance, to provide sensitive measures of operator load, and to have the smallest between subject variability. Evaluations of operators' performance can be difficult, and the need to assess subjective mental workload is critical. Before we begin discussing the specific steps in using the NASA TLX, we will break down the components and what they mean. While watching the following video, think about what could contribute to the stress experienced by the taxi driver. Keep in mind the ideas of mental demand, physical demand, temporal demand, own performance, effort, and frustration. Hey, where can I take you? Uh, Walden Library, please. Okay, awesome. Just let me put on my GPS. Do you mind if I turn on the music? Yeah, go ahead. It's really rainy. Let me just turn on my windshield wipers. Time. They were really it. One guy even knew the uh, Gangnam Style dance. Wow, I'm really sorry. That honestly came out of nowhere. I'll take you to your destination now. There's a lot of things that I have to pay attention to. This rain isn't helping at all. We'll come back to this situation after going through the subscales in more detail, as well as the specific steps in using the NASA TLX. These six dimensions can be further divided into three factors that relate to the demands of the task, including mental, physical, and temporal demands. The other three scales specifically look at the interaction of the task and the user. These include effort, frustration, and performance. When a user is given a NASA TLX package, the six scale items are always presented with their definitions. This ensures that the user is familiar with the right definitions and that there is no var variability between users. The first subscale is mental demands and is defined as the amount of mental and perceptual activity required for a task. Was the task easy or demanding? Simple or complex? Exacting or forgiving? The second subscale, physical demands, includes the amount of physical activity required for the task, such as pushing, pulling, or controlling. The user must think about whether the task was easy or demanding, slow or brisk, restful or laborious, or slack or strenuous. Temporal demands describes the pressure the individual felt due to the pace at which the task occurred. Was the pace slow and leisurely or rapid and frantic? The fourth item, own performance, describes how successful the individual felt after completing the task. Did they accomplish the goals that were previously set? And how satisfied were they by their performance? Effort describes how hard the individual had to work to perform at the level that they did whether it be mentally or physically. Frustration deals with the feelings of insecurity, irritation, or discouragement felt during the task. It's time for multiple choice questions. Which of the following is not a rating scale item? Is it A, frustration, B, physical demands, C, cognitive impairment, or D, own performance? If you answered cognitive impairment, you are correct. Now that you know how to properly describe the scales, how will you administer the NASA TLX? To begin, the user must read the instructions. They must also read the scale definitions to ensure accuracy and complete understanding when the scales are being filled out. The next step is for the user to become familiar with the technique of filling out the scales. If necessary, this can be done by practicing using the scales with sample tasks to ensure the user understands each subscale. If the NASA TLX is being used for research, step three is when the user performs the task. Otherwise, the task may have already been completed at an earlier time. The actual subjective measures come from the next two steps, where the user decides the weight of each dimension or factor, and later rates each on the NASA TLX scale. The weight of each factor is determined using 15 different comparison cards. Based on the task just performed, the rater would circle which factor is more important to their workload experience. The weights can be obtained any time after the task is performed. 
Next, numerical ratings are obtained after the task is completed. The user fills out each of the six subscales and marks an X along the scale where it most appropriately fits for the given task. All endpoints of the six subscales are labeled low to high, except for the dimension of own performance, which is labeled good to poor. These ratings measure the magnitude of each of the six dimensions for the task. Mental demand. No, it wasn't, wasn't too mentally demanding. Okay. Physical demand. Man, my back was really hurting. Temporal demand. Uh, it definitely took a while. Right there. My performance. Uh, I think I did okay eventually. It just took a long time. I'll put it right in the middle. Effort. Put in quite a bit of effort. And the task was extremely frustrating. Hmm, that there. Perfect. To obtain the overall score, the 15 comparison cards are tallied and the respective weights determined. Next, the X's marked on the scale are tallied, and each is associated with a number from 0 to 100 based on where it falls along the scale. This raw rating is combined with the factor weights to give an adjusted rating. All six adjusted ratings are added together and divided by 15 to give an overall score. Keep in mind that there are two versions of the NASA TLX, the paper version, as seen here, and the computer version, which can be found by following this link. Both versions will assess mental workload in the same way. Let's see it in action. Now we will see an example of how the NASA TLX tool is used in the workplace. Mary, Mary, could you come to the storage room, please? What do you need? Hey, can I get you to move all these chairs to the delivery dock, please? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. sure. I can do that. Okay, awesome. Thanks. It shouldn't be too hard. In that video, we saw an example of a task that was very physically demanding, but not particularly mentally demanding. It would be rated appropriately on the NASA TLX. What about a more complicated task? Let's think back to the taxi driver. Good time. They were really shaking it. One guy even knew the uh, Gangnam Style dance. Wow, I'm really sorry. That honestly came out of nowhere. I'll take you to your destination now. There's a lot of things that I have to pay attention to. This brain isn't helping at all. What factors would have influenced her mental workload? Think about this in terms of the six NASA TLX subscales we reviewed earlier. We'll give you a few seconds to do this. Did you consider these stressors? The rain, the loud radio, the pedestrians walking by, the GPS, the stress of having to reach the destination as quickly as possible. All of these factors would contribute to the taxi driver's overall perception of workload. Let's try it. Now imagine that you are in the same situation. Take out a printed copy of the NASA TLX rating scale and fill it out as if you were the taxi driver and your task was to drive the passenger to the destination in that weather. Think back to what each scale item means, and remember to use an X to mark the appropriate spot. This is how our taxi driver rated each item. How does your NASA TLX compare? They may be very different. Keep in mind that the NASA TLX is a subjective measure of mental workload. One person may find that driving with a radio is very distracting and greatly increases overall mental demand, whereas another might not perceive it to be a great distraction. 
As well as being administered to employees or workers, the NASA TLX can be used for research. For example, this study used the NASA TLX as a tool to compare usability of traditional keyboards when compared to touchscreen keyboards, such as on an iPad. Each participant was given the NASA TLX to determine the mental workload of the types of keyboards. This is an example of how the NASA TLX can be used by product designers and manufacturers not only to evaluate stress on employees, but also to improve their products in the future. Let's move on to the strengths of the NASA TLX. We know that NASA TLX is used very often in today's world to measure subjective mental workload, but why are so many researchers using this method more often than other methods such as SWOT, Subjective Workload Assessment Technique, and MCH, Modified Cooper Harper Scale? A few of the main reasons are because of the superior validity, reliability, and ease of use of this tool. Validity is defined as being true under every interpretation and measuring what is intended to be measured. In relation to the NASA TLX, this means whether or not it is actually mental workload that is being measured for a specific task. Since NASA TLX is a subjective workload measurement, it has to take into consideration different workload measures. Every answer will be different and many aspects of MWL are measured, which increases its validity. Every person is different and their definitions of underworked and overworked may not be the same, therefore a scale is provided. The different subscales allow for the people to access certain areas such as how physically demanding the task was or the effort they put into the task, instead of just answering the question, what was your mental workload? When the subjects see simple questions such as how frustrating was the task, they are able to specifically answer them, which eventually leads to the more in-depth questions regarding their mental workload. NASA TLX is also available in several other languages. Since translations must be accurate and uniform, unintentional bias does not occur, further increasing the validity of the NASA TLX. Being reliable means being able to provide the same results on repeated trials. Reliability describes how much variance appears in measurements. If something is reliable, it has minimal errors when it comes to the actual procedure and the results which NASA TLX seems to follow. How is NASA TLX reliable? First off, it can't be modified by the experimenter and, in both the computer and online version, all questions are the same. It is also proven to be the most sensitive when it comes to the very low and very high workload measures when compared to other subjective workload assessments. The NASA TLX is preferred by many researchers because of its relatively simple concept. The distribution of this workload assessment is done in a quick manner and individuals completing the assessment feel it is easy to understand and fill out. Because it's available in many mediums, it is able to be used in different environments. Certain researchers are even starting to make the NASA TLX available on iPads and with their own applications. This will only increase the popularity of the NASA TLX workload assessment. It's time for multiple choice question. NASA TLX thought to be better than other workload assessments. A. It measures high and low workload amounts. B. It's multidimensional. C. It's user friendly. Or D. All of the above. If you answer D. All of the above, you're correct. This concludes the NASA TLX training program. So remember, if you want to avoid this, Use the NASA TLX to identify sources of excessive workload before it becomes an issue. For more information, visit the NASA TLX official website.